Hi there, Sonia and Michael Hi from there. the Urban Homestead Academy. Uh, today we're going to look at a recent article that's come out calling for a new minister for food in Australia. And we were very interested when we saw this one, weren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm being a bit critical of um, governments, especially Western governments, seem to be very slow off the mark in, in warning people about the, uh, the various issues in, involved with food security. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of those um, those issues sort of coming home to roost now, but we've seen very little talk from our, our leaders. So I was quite excited to see this. Um, well, it's more of a it's more of a think tank article. Think tank, it's, yeah. it's more of a wish list of perhaps some of the things we need to do. But it's it, a recommendation. It's a recommendation. So uh, it's but it was good to see the article. We just want to have a bit of a look at it today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a yeah. um, article that's been put out by the University of Melbourne, uh, and the authors are Dr. Rachel Carey and Dr. Maureen Murphy. Um, and take it away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the title: Australia's new government must tackle food insecurity. So, for those of you who don't know, we've just had an election. Um, when was it? May. And mm. uh, so we've got a new government in, in place. Uh, so the previous government, as far as I know, didn't even really look at the issue of food security at all. Um, but hopefully, what these authors are hoping for is that the new incoming government will start taking these issues far more seriously. I, I suppose just to, on that though, uh, the issue of food insecurity has been increasing quite rapidly. Yes, it has. And yes. getting big. So whilst you know there might have been seen such a need for it previously, yeah. now's the time to, to, for to Australia look at it, to look at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the authors say Australia needs to boost its capacity to weather shocks to our food security. And that's why we need a minister for food. So we, the, the authors here are, are recommending we have a special minister, yeah. and that's all they basically do, look at the issue of food security. Um, now, I'm not sure if any other governments in the world have actually got a specific minister, but at least these authors are recommending that a Western nation like Australia, that most people probably would have thought would have been wouldn't have needed a minister for food. Well, we do have some other ministers, but they're not focused specifically on food security. So we do have ministers that look after the environment and water. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've got another minister that looks after agriculture, fish fisheries and forestry. Uh, but a lot of that would be to do with, you know, exports as well and business models and yes. not necessarily food security. Well, the authors recommend a specific... Yes. Food minister. Yes. So they're not. They're, they're looking at beyond the the, the bounds of uh, agriculture and environment. They're looking at a special minister. That's all they basically yep. do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so as food prices in Australia continue to rise, and we've seen that in our previous videos, cost of living is biting. It's hitting people hard. Uh, tackling food security should be on the to-do list, high up on the to-do list of the government. Um, and their research is looking at, you know, um, having some sort of collaboration with stakeholders uh, from government and having a roadmap to tackle the problem of uh, food insecurity. Uh, food prices have been rising since 2020, uh, multiple shocks to the system. So it's like a perfect storm, isn't it? It's mm. not just one thing, it's lots of things colliding. Uh, they, they've been saying that global food prices hit an all-time high in March this year uh, once the war started. Uh, and whilst we do acknowledge Australia is in, you know, we've been in a good position previously, but of late we've had, you know, we're having supply chain issues. Uh, we've got farmers that have had, you know, uh, climate variability, lost a lot of their, uh, you know, produce and growing capability. Uh, and now we've had to increase some of our food imports as well. Um, so we're certainly starting to see some things happening in Australia in that place. Yeah, well, they, they mentioned the, the, the war, the, the, the Russia-Ukraine war. Um, it would take, take that back up yeah. there. I mean, that definitely is a factor, but it's certainly not the only factor. There are other uh, factors that w were around a long time before the war started. Yeah. But even so, even so, they, they did produce around about 28% of the global wheat exports that come out of uh, Russia and Ukraine. Yeah. It's also Russia is one of the biggest um, uh, exporters of fertilisers. So it, it does have an impact, but it's certainly not the only reason why we should be looking at food security on yeah. a longer on a long term basis. Yeah, and they are saying that a lot of our fresh food we do produce domestically, definitely, um, and we're not in as dire a situation as maybe some other countries that are relying heavily on uh, imports. I mean, we looked at Sri Lanka the other day, didn't we? That mm. um, used to be a self sufficient. Uh, you know, as far as in regards to their food production, are now very heavily reliant on importing. Mm, I think you know yes. a, a lot of their food. So yes, we do produce a lot of our food uh, locally. Um, our main foods that we do produce are, are wheat and the grains, uh, oil seeds, legumes, sugar cane. 
uh, as well as our fruits and veggies. But we have seen some extreme weather events which has had an impact on that too, haven't we? That's, well, fertiliser yeah. prices, uh, fuel prices, yep. war, extreme weather events, and it's, it all just, uh, in rising inflation, it all just feeds into this, this whole food security uh, issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what this article was uh, talking about was that food prices, uh, when they do rise, people already at risk of food insecurity are the most uh, affected. Uh, so people who are struggling to you know, purchase their food. And food insecurity is definitely growing in Australia. And they are estimating that at least one million Australians are running out of food mm -hmm. or can't afford to buy more. And many are skipping meals or eating cheaper, less healthy options uh, to cope. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, a million Australians a month. It's quite amazing because, I mean, you wouldn't sort of think of, of first world nations, developed nations as, as being food insecure. But what we're seeing that it's across the globe now, it's across yes. you know, North America, Great Britain, Australia. We're seeing more and more people from you know, wealthy developed countries being food insecure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, struggling there. Uh, and they're saying it's difficult to get an accurate picture of what's happening in Australia in regards to food insecurity because we have inconsistent and infrequent data collection. Um, around four to fifth so four to fourteen percent of Australians are thought to experience some degree of food insecurity, but they think the estimates could estimates could be considerably higher. And how they do measure that is by demand for emergency food relief. So that gives them a little bit of an idea. And what they have found is that this is twenty twenty data. This was two years ago. Um, that the food relief demand from charities rose by around forty seven percent. Uh, in Australia. So that was in 2020, so during that first year of the COVID pandemic. And the number of Australians going hungry is likely to uh, increase as we've got more pressures on the on the food mm. and the supplies. Yeah, so it says that uh, emergency food relief isn't a long-term solution. Because uh, what happens with emergency food relief is, is basically the food comes out of the, the existing food chain, which is basically the supermarkets. Yeah. Um, so whatever the supermarket, if, it's out, if foods are out of date or, or someone wants to donate those foods, that's where the food comes from. Mm. But if something happens with that, that system, then there is no food security. So it's a very, very short-term way of, of, um, of having a food security management system because if something happens um, uh, and that food's not there, then there is no food security. So we're going to look at some of the things that I would like to see that this, um, this think tank looks at but that's uh, but they've, they've they've made that uh, admission that it that it isn't a long term solution. No, emergency food is not. It's not a long term solution. No, it's not because, like mm. you said, as soon as the uh, like the supermarkets that might be donating, as soon as they don't have excess, mm. they can't donate. Then the charities can't support that's people. Right, yeah. um, also, to the charities, the emergency food relief are unable to keep up with the increasing demand. So more and more people are wanting help. So there's not enough donated food to give mm. out and they're also saying a lot of people are very embarrassed you know hitting hard mm. times to ask for but, that sort of help but, but also on that point there we we, we looked at another um, article that our, in our last food school report where a couple of the uh, the ceos of our major supermarkets were saying people are buying a lot more canned goods and long-term storage goods because yes. technically they're cheaper and they're the sort of goods that went into our, our short-term food security for, for, yes. for, for food. So they're so more common people, the yes. normal people are just buying those. Yes. Uh, so, that, so, so therefore, on the other side of that, those, those, food, those, those goods are not available for people in, in a food crisis. Yes. So that's why the, the authors are saying it's not a long-term solution. Yes, yeah. that's right. So people can't buy the fruit and veggies now with lettuces mm. going up to $12 or, mm. or whatever, so they're buying the, the canned stuff. And they make a, a mention here that much of the food that is provided through the, this emergency aid is, is, is often highly processed and unhealthy yeah. and it doesn't meet people's personal or cultural food preferences. Yeah. So a lot of our, our, our Western countries, when we talk about the, the short-term food security, it's basically processed foods, yeah. uh, whether they be canned goods or, or, or pasta or things like that. Great for filling you up, uh, yep. but not as a long-term solution if you want to have a nutritious diet. No. Uh, it's just a, a very short-term fix. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I suppose that um, we've always said that, haven't we, that the, um, the you know, emergency food relief isn't a long-term solution. Yes. Um, you know, yes. locally, that's why we've always advocated for community gardens and, you know, that sort of stuff happening. And also to our overseas work that we've done all of our projects. Um, yeah, it's great to help people out with bags of rice and food yeah. in some of the overseas countries short term, but our, our passion's always been about helping people set up their food gardens. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's, if you're going to have a long-term strategy, like a, like a medium to long-term, a generational strategy, has to be has to be based at a low 
local level it has to be based on growing their own food yeah it's the only way you can do it yeah but look it's great that we've got these charities yeah, absolutely. That and they, and but these, they're under the pump now too mm. they're under the pump as and far as the yeah. authors are, have acknowledged that it's not a long-term solution our current uh, our food security strategy yeah definitely yeah. Mm. Uh, so the authors of this are, you know, obviously looking at having the government having a whole of government approach uh, to increase the resilience of our Australian food systems to shocks and stresses and planning for uh, resilient food systems. So there's some strategies that they've put forward there. Um, one of them is to increase the minimum wage uh, for the lowest paid, and that's actually happened recently in Australia. So that's great news that the uh, minimum wage is actually has increased. Um, and also, too, they talk about a plan that includes all relevant government departments, so health department, the environment, agriculture and trade, with a focus on promoting a food system that's healthy, uh, that's sustainable, that is equitable, everyone can access it, and that it's resilient and factored in, you know, with, uh, you know, all the shocks that are happening. Um, and looking at a farm to a fork uh, resilient process. So they're saying there is no better place to start a new Minister for Food in Australia. Absolutely. Mm. Well, uh, we've got to give them 10 out of 10 for the idea. Yep. And I think any any forward momentum in, in, in the area of food security is, has to be a good thing. Yep. Um, but I did make a couple of notes that if, if I had a bit of a wish list of what I'd like to see this food, food minister tackle, mm. these are some of the points I would say that uh, obviously we want to, uh, local food systems, lo local food production systems, that would be one of the first things, not, not a global um, a global, global dominant food uh, security system where we're relying on other countries. I think sovereign it's nations... too many pieces in the chain, it's, isn't it, if something if, goes wrong? If we rely on uh, Nation A for, for providing this, this type of food, if something goes wrong with the supply chain system, yep. then we're out of, out of that food again. Yes. So, so yep. I, I'd like to see local food production, uh, not, not, not an emphasis on global food production, I'd like to see an emphasis on seed sovereignty, yep. and I've often said that agriculture is the, is the foundation of civilizations, but, but the seed itself is the foundation of life itself. So without the seeds, and without local seed sovereignty, we shouldn't even really be talking about, about um, uh, food security, I don't think. That is actually a good point, because there's a lot of big global seed banks, isn't there? Where's that... Um Where's that large seed bank? Yes, well, the, 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 there is the, the in the, in the Arctic Circle off Norway, that's, yes. that's, and it's actually called the Doomsday Vaults. But that's a bit like it's a bit like talking about the, a global supply chain because they have hundreds of thousands of of, um, of seeds that they've stored at this, at, at this seed bank. Yeah. Um, but who gets access to those seeds if something goes wrong? It won't be you or it, I, it, I don't it, think. It won't be. It won't be us. No. Uh, and it won't be any of you guys out there either. <laughs> uh, so so it, it, that. Nothing wrong with having a, a seed bank, but if we're going to look about... Um, if people can't access it, how do they distribute it around the world? And, of course, yeah. the best way of having seed sovereignty is to is to have your own seeds, mm. to have a bit of a seed bank going in your own home. You don't yep. have to uh, leave it up to like a, a, a global seed bank to do that. I'd like to see the diversification of crops. Yep. Um, I think that what's actually happened with globalisation is we've had certain areas tend to grow certain foods, you know, like a dominance of, of growing wheat in Australia or the dominance of rice crops in Asia, or the dominance of corn crops in, in North America, I'd like to see a, diversi a diversification of that where uh, existing uh, existing people that are growing food are growing a lot more varieties yeah. of food. Yeah. Uh, breeding programs for specialist crops. Um, we actually have a, 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 a farmer down here that's actually breeding rice varieties in Tasmania. Mm -hmm. now, now, for those of you who don't know, Tasmania is the southernmost state off the Australian mainland, yep. and we're at a, at a latitude of 42 degrees here, and this particular guy, it's unheard of to grow rice in this latitude, but he's actually growing specific, breeding specific mm. varieties mm. of rice, dryland rice, that are grown in Tasmania. So I'd like to see like uh, some breeding programs, yeah. uh, seed banks, I'd like to see school programs. Yeah. I think when we talk about food security, if we're not actually, uh, if we're not actually um, teaching the next generation of, of, of people how to grow food, mm. then who's going to grow the food? Yes, it's not going to work. So, so I think I like farmers to... are an, an aging in you know industry. Yes, so the so. average age of our farmers is you know it's... quite up there. I think is, is it fifty eight or fifty nine? Yes, it's up, yes, pushing sixty now. Yeah. the global age of a farmer. Yes, it, it's 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 a dying industry as far as because. It's gone very te technological. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so there's a real need to actually teach our children how to grow food. Yes. Um, storage systems is another thing I'd like to see a bit of um, a talk about. Um, generally speaking, most nations might have a month or two of 
grain supplies, mm. I'd like to see that sort of um, pushed out to at least a, 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 at least a year. Mm. Of, and I'd like to see the, the, the storage systems be at a state level rather than a national level. Uh, and the sum total of having each state uh, have, having um, a store of food is that it, it creates a national yes. uh, food bank. Yeah. Uh, and also sustainability, I think it's really good when we talk about growing seeds and to have sustainable practice, like try and get more organic food production. We're trialling a lot of that. Trialling a lot moment. of organic yeah. food production. Yeah. Um, and uh, with good success, I'll add. Yes. And with good success. Yes. Uh, 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 heritage type of crops yeah. that don't need as much fertiliser. So you take a lot of those stresses out of the system. Mm. So um, we haven't really seen in detail what what the the, the food minister is going to look no, at. No, but we're going to we're going to follow that to see whether it yeah, so, comes of that. So this that was that was my wish list of perhaps things that I would like to see the food minister, food security minister, have a look at. Yes, um, definitely. And it's also important to note that that some of these some of my ideas could be on a national level, but you can you can adapt all of these ideas at a personal scale too can't you yes i mean you can you can save your own seed you can grow food organically um you, you can be part of a school system where you're teaching kids so all these things can be done at a national level but also at a very very community-based level yeah definitely mm. Mm. so yeah look watch this space we'll keep an eye out see what happens with this if we do end up with a minister for food uh what that role might entail what those focus areas are um, but regardless of whether Australia gets one or not, I suppose here at the Urban Homestead Academy, mm. you're a minister for food. Absolutely. And yes. I'm a minister for food. I, and we all should be our own ministers for food, I <laughs> think. That, we are. That, that would be a great idea. We've given ourselves that title because we actually yep. quite like it. We like it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're the, the ministers for food. <laughs> In our own homestead. In our own homestead. Yeah. Yes. So. Anyway, so we're going to uh, keep growing and we'll keep putting videos up so you can see what food we're growing. and um, yeah, Absolutely, yeah. And, we'll and we're, you know, working towards all of those points that you actually yep. mentioned there anyway. Yep, yep. And yeah. be encouraged. There are solutions. There are solutions happening now. So we just sort of sign off now and wishing you a, a great day. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you in our next Food Security Report. Yep, we'll okay. do. Okay, bye for now. Bye for now. Happy gardening. Hmm.